All right. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Middle East Forum's speaker webinar series and podcast. I'm Stacey Roman, and I will be moderating this discussion today. We're pleased to have Raz Rothstein, co-founder and CEO of Stand With Us, an international organization dedicated to strengthening Israel's image, empowering its supporters, and fighting anti-Semitism. Uh, join us to discuss Israeli Apartheid Week returns to a campus near you. Ms. Rothstein will speak for 15 minutes and open it up for questions. Should you wish to ask a question, please use the Q&A box located at the bottom of your screen to type your question. And with that, I'll turn the discussion over to Ms. Raz Rothstein. Thank you very much. Um, so let's begin by taking a look at the uh, intention of Israel Apartheid Week. Then we'll talk about whether or not it's grown and what students and others uh, should be doing about it. So first of all, let's take a look at intention and what it is that they want to accomplish. Israel Apartheid Week. I'd like to ask you to please bring up a, uh, a logo that they use across campuses. So if you can do that now, that would be great. No, there you go, perfect. So this is Israel Apartheid Week. This is from uh, 2009, and it's it's been used uh, ever since. Uh, and it's it's extremely effective. But if we take a close look at it, what is this teaching? So we've got a, a child holding a teddy bear. The child uh, representing innocence, and the teddy bear uh, doubling that. And then you've got Israel launching a rocket at the child. So, so the message is the innocent child is being attacked by the evil Israelis. This is extremely important because <laughs> this is a logo that has been used over and over. And the lesson here is uh, pretty profound that Israel is, is an evil entity. So how is this anti-Semitic? Well, it, uh, it's modern anti-Semitism. It, it actually resembles things that we've seen in the past. Let's show that picture of the grotesque looking Jew. There you go. So we have seen this in the Middle East, uh, a grotesque looking Jew about to eat a Palestinian child. Sort of same theme, you've got the evil Jew uh, hurting an innocent child. Let's look at the other one from Nazi Germany. Here you have the grotesque, again, looking Jew uh, about to attack a woman. Uh, and so she's the victim. So you have the perpetrator and you have the victim. So thank you. We can remove those now. They're hard to look at. They're disgusting, actually. Um, but the point being that we're looking at uh, a an attempt to teach that, that uh, Israelis are the evil ones with evil intention and the Palestinians are the recipients of this evil. Now, if you know nothing, if you know nothing about Israel, if you know nothing about apartheid, even the word, uh, you understand that that you know. Oh my God, this is a, a terrible, a terrible entity. Uh, we need to help, and and people are very concerned about social justice. They want, they have good hearts. They want to be involved, and so they may actually jump on this concept of, you know, we've got to help. We've got to help here because there's this evil entity, and there is this innocent entity. And, uh, and we have to help uh, make that clear for people so that uh, the goal would be, uh, let's create through Israel Apartheid Week, through the boycott campaigns, et cetera, let's create this, you know, disgust with the state of Israel and anybody who supports it. So that is very problematic for Jewish students on campus. So Israel is part of most Jews' identity. It's a component of their identity. So we know that 50%, almost 50% of the world's Jews live in Israel. So like it or not, uh, most Jewish people who live in other places 
have relatives and friends uh, living in Israel and they feel connected in some way or maybe in a lot of ways to the state of Israel and to its history, to its culture, to their roots, et cetera. So when Israel is being attacked on campus, it, it resonates for them. It feels like an attack. So uh, they dare not speak up because they would be supporting something that, oh, is so evil. So th this is the intention to create this atmosphere that nobody would want to speak up as a supporter of Israel. And for some students at works, and they feel intimidated, particularly during these apartheid weeks. And for other students, they walk by and they, they don't care much, they don't get involved. But they may feel, wow, Israel's being attacked. That's a part of my identity. And it makes them feel marginalized on campus, maybe less able to be honest about their full identity on campus, which they should be able to, to be on. We, we should all be able to exercise our free speech and be honest about every part of ourselves. Why not? And so if this part of myself is being intimidated, of course, it's gonna have a, a result on campus. So again, in the story being told in that one picture of the helicopter, rocketing an, an innocent child with a teddy bear, we have no context. What happened? You know, why, why is Israel, you know, uh, shooting rockets at a child? And so there is never a mention, there is never a mention of terrorism of any form. So uh, we will never hear in conversations about car rammings, knife attacks, rocket launching we will never we will never hear about all of the propaganda that is taught to small children to encourage them to want to murder an israeli so we will never hear that part of it we'll never know why in the story that's being told in the israel apartheid weeks and in the boycott campaigns we'll never hear anything about context why? Why is Israel rocketing at all? Which is very important because, you know, if it's a one-sided out of context story with such a terrible picture, uh, it really teaches a very biased situation. Uh, and so what is, what is the intention here? The intention is to create ill will on the campus and ultimately impact uh, tomorrow's voters, tomorrow's leaders, and make sure that, that this is done in a campaign way so that it is most effective and that it impacts uh, votes. Is it growing, shrinking? It's interesting. Uh, I looked at it over the last week and a half because this was the question, is it growing or shrinking? Uh, understand that you know we have a very large campus team and it's global uh, with with a, a big chunk of our efforts here at stand with us in the United States and Canada. So there's a difference between uh, what's happening in the United States. The United States is around the same as it as it has been. Uh, COVID of course put uh, a lid on apartheid weeks because there was no there was no uh, school, uh, but but since uh, things have opened up, it's been about the same in the United States. Some schools are working together better about apartheid weeks, but but overall the numbers have remained the same in the United States. The danger that we see is that a lot of this has moved into social media. So the picture is worth a thousand words concept. Uh, you, you see more activity in social media and a result being greater incidents of anti-Semitic uh, rhetoric on social media. In Canada, it's interesting. Uh, there's less activity with BDS, with the BDS campaign, and more activity with the Israel Apartheid Week 
So the numbers have gone up a bit in Canada. Uh, all the key universities are involved, uh, at least 10, if not more. And uh, so the numbers have, have, uh, have gelled more in Canada than in the United States. But once again, I want to point out that social media is the, the side effect problem, not just with Israel Apartheid Week, but also with everything that we're looking at like this. Um, wanted to also talk about what students can see, what they can expect during apartheid weeks. So the timing of apartheid is actually uh, ongoing for about three weeks. It's not just one week of activity and then it's over. So for example, UCLA, uh, will be next week. Um, there are other schools that are going to have it in May. So it, it's it's an ongoing floating apartheid week uh, on the campuses. And sometimes it's called by different names, um, but it's all the same thing. It's around this time of year. So it's educate in this very bad way, in this very misinforming way. Uh, and then call for a punishment, what would the punishment be? It would be uh, BDS, it would be the boycott. So if Israel behaves this badly, according to what we teach you during the apartheid week, then we need to call for punishment. And of course the punishment, now that I've educated the campus, now that the SJP Students for Justice in Palestine have educated their campuses, now it's time to act, to do something about it. And that would uh, bring them to, to the uh, BDS campaign. And for those of you who don't know BDS, it's Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions. And it, uh, it has been problematic. Many of the uh, states across the country have anti-BDS laws, which is very good. We were very involved in that, but um, you know they, they'll still do it. So whether or not a university is invested in Israel, calling for boycott will still be a campaign, even though there is no investment, because it's it's a method, it's a, it's a tool to teach the campus in this way, to teach them badly. Uh, so what do we see during apartheid week? We see a uh, street theater, and over the years we've seen, you know, people uh, in die-ins, we've seen coffins, we've seen large, apartheid walls, quote unquote, with pictures, et cetera, all over the walls, including the picture that, that I showed you at the beginning. Uh, and so it, it's, it's high drama and, uh, and usually culminates in a rally. So a noisy rally that, that people you know bang drums and walk around and, and scream these chants that people are familiar with like, um, you know, free, free Palestine uh, and, and other things that, uh, that we are familiar with. So the whole term apartheid in the first place is a lie. Uh, Israel is not apartheid. Anybody who's been to Israel knows this. Uh, the, there is a reliance, a heavy reliance on ignorance. So all of the work being done to educate badly relies on on peers ignorance so the, so students who obviously most people have not been to israel know nothing about israel assume that these tragic terrible stories are true and they take them on they take them to heart you can't blame people for getting upset about stories they hear you can blame people who are lying uh, to to make their points. Now, to be clear, I just want to uh, make this point: there is suffering going on among the Palestinian people, and there is tragedy, and there has to be change. But scapegoating, in the classic sense, against Jews and against Israel, is not going to fix their problems. So that really is a point that needs to be made over and over. This is not the way to fix the tragic and real circumstances of the Palestinian people. 
the way to do that is through dialogue and, and meetings about how to achieve peace. So as a microcosm on campus, we don't see dialogue. So particularly during these weeks of campaigns, there is no desire on the part of SJP, the Students for Justice in Palestine, who are bringing these campaigns to, cam to campus. There is no desire on their parts for any kind of dialogue. Conversely, Jewish students will reach out classically trying to have dialogue and uh, there, there isn't a recipient on the other end, which is very symbolic to Israel's many offers for peace and no recipient on the other end in the Palestinian leadership. So that's, that's what we're looking at. Um, speakers are gonna be brought during Israel Apartheid Week. Uh, speakers like uh, Razmia Odeh, who probably won't speak anymore because I don't think she's allowed in the country, but listen, they can do all kinds of things with, just like I'm talking to you right now, uh, they're, they're able to do all kinds of things with, with uh, Zoom, et cetera. Leila Khaled, uh, so who's Razmia Odeh? She, uh, she participated in the murder of two young men. Uh, and Leila Khaled, she, she actually attempted two airplane hijackings. So these are speakers that are you know, brought to some campuses and it's very troublesome that anybody would even think to bring such people that uh, have participated in terrorism. But uh, when terrorism is glorified uh, through programs like this, and when half of the story is left off in the full story, when terrorism is left off in the conversation, you have a one-sided story being told. And again, I wanna emphasize that there is suffering and the Palestinians really do need a solution to the issues that they face, but Hamas is not a solution. Terrorism is not a solution. Taking out a knife and, and killing a, a senior citizen in Israel is not a solution. A 13 year old as, as just happened a couple of weeks ago, uh, shooting a father and child is not a solution. Teaching, Palestinian young children to, to hate and to murder Jews is not a solution. Uh, they, they do need a solution, but those solutions are not going to work. So I guess now let's take some questions. All right. Thank you so much for giving that uh, lecture. Uh, so the first question is from Dexter Van Zyl, Middle East Forum. Uh, he was very excited for your talk. So he asked, do you agree with the argument that anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism threaten the West in that they divide societies and distract attention, uh, the attention of intellectuals and policymakers away from the threats posed by Islamism and Chinese expansionism? <laughs> so, uh, hi, Dexter. So first of all, let me say that um, there is a lot of focus on uh, anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism. And I should say that they're one and the same for us. Uh, as I said to you early on, uh, Jews are mainly, most Jews are connected to the state of Israel and they feel uh, you know, that this is theirs. This is their history. This is their culture. This is where Judaism began. Uh, and, and many Jews, many Jewish groups, and many leaders in the Jewish world are very upset about this. And so we see the rise of anti-Semitism accompanied by the rise of voices and very good voices from Jewish leaders and, and organizations that are very concerned about this. So yes, this has become an issue uh, and it is distracting from other things, but you know what? It needs attention because we are facing a rise in anti-Semitism that is very real, you know, very tangible. The numbers don't lie. We are we're looking at, you know, if Jews are two percent, everybody now knows this. We've been we've been hearing this so much. Jews represent just over two percent of the population in America, but nearly sixty percent of hate crimes are being perpetrated against Jewish people. So. Yes, there is an issue. Yes, there is attention being given, and I'm I'm grateful for that. And sure, there will be distraction from other issues as a result. 
Thank you for that. And the follow-up question was, have the tactics used to delegitimize Israel and to demoralize Israeli and American Jews been deployed against the U.S. and West at large? And how can we reverse this process if so? I'm sorry, but you cut out for some reason. Can you repeat the question? Sure. Uh, have the tactics used uh, to delegitimize Israel and to demoralize Israeli and American Jews been deployed against the U.S. and West at large? And how can we reverse this process if so? Well, okay, I'll go to the to the main theme of what Stand With Us tries to do, and that is educate. So uh, in all ways, education is the road to peace. And we really need to, so th that is part of the solution to all of this Israel Apartheid Week and all of this anti-Semitism, building bridges, educating people, uh, making sure that you're engaged is, is very important. Making sure that people stay proud is also very important. Uh, what, what is the response to delegitimization, education and, and more uh, Israel information? So it can't be that we go and we hide and sit in a corner. It has to be that we are motivated to come out and, and, and deal with these issues head on in a positive way sharing our culture and building bridges. Thank you. Steve asks, are the actions of the pro-Israel uh, Zionist organizations working? Are they effective or is it business as usual? And is it, some, uh, is it possibly time for something different? So it's always time for thinking out of the box, for sure. Um, but from, from our standpoint, uh, it is very important, the work that people are doing. There, there was a lot of denial for many years at the beginning of Stand With Us. Many other groups were involved, but so many groups that should have been involved at a very high level were not. Uh, so, so we've gone from denial uh, that there is a problem in the first place to recognition that there is a problem and, and now more and more Jewish groups and even our, our allies, our allies who are not Jewish are getting involved in standing up against anti-Semitism. So it really isn't business as usual. It isn't any more business as usual. There's more groups involved. There's different ways to build bridges. There's more programming going on. So I'm grateful for all of that. And I'm grateful to be uh, one of the people that, that has been involved in all this all these years. So yes, there's a rise, but there's also a rise of programming and response and legal efforts, et cetera. Thank you. David S. Levine asks, isn't the inability of so many Jewish students on American universities to answer the uh, assertions of Israel Apartheid Week a reflection of the low level of Jewish organization in the U.S. and its mar marginalization by the Jewish community? Very excellent uh, question. We we do see that there is um, a, a huge need for children, even young children, young children, to to start learning about their own personal connection to Israel, about you know what's really happening there, even about the conflict at an early age to understand it and not be afraid to talk about it. Um, and to take a look at all things and not even not be afraid to discuss certain aspects of it. Um, so yes, there has been a very low level of uh, teaching in this regard. When we started Stand With Us, it was uh, appalling uh, how low level it was. And, and it is the very reason for a lot of our ramping up as quickly as we did, and and uh, you know we're we're now on six continents working and doing these things on six continents because of this issue, because of the low information. Whose fault is it? Uh, you know, I I don't really know, but here we are, here we are. So uh, it we have taken this responsibility on. We're we're working in middle schools, high schools, and college campuses as fast as we can. We're putting out you know tsunami of information on social media. We're very, very successful in that way. And we and other groups are, are working very hard to educate as fast as we can because of this vacuum that is pointed out by your, your caller. Thank you. Hiya Gil uh, asked on your uh, 
former question, uh, with whom do you build bridges? What groups are joining us? So you can be happy. Uh, we're, <laughs> we're actually working closely with the Hindu American community across the United States. Uh, we have beautiful, beautiful uh, programs and relationships building with the Hindu community. Uh, African American uh, church groups are coming to us and we're coming to them uh, to build programming and bridges. Uh, there's one coming up, I think this Sunday, uh, a uh, Passover, Passover event in Chicago uh, that is going to be a, a huge musical event. They're expecting nearly a thousand people, Jews and African Americans uh, working together to uh, build these bridges. And so, and of course, uh, there are other groups too, but you know, we, we just need to find them and we need to, uh, to build those bridges. We need to be concerned about their issues and, and they are very aware that there's a problem with the Jewish community uh, receiving so many uh, acts of anti-Semitism in the last few years and this rise, everybody can see it. Absolutely. That's great to hear. Uh, Larry White asks or states, if memory serves, when BDS was directed at South Africa, Nelson Mandela said that it did not help their cause. Is this not the same for BDS against Israel? It's a mix. It's, it's really not clear cut. Uh, the boycott movement picks up speed just because it has a tool. It has a tool with which to get out there and say, look, here's the evil Israel, like the, the picture that we started with at the beginning. Here's this evil Israel. Isn't this clear? They need to be punished. And then the punishment is it's sort of it's like a it's a whole strategy. And uh, and in some ways it, it works to to elevate BDS. I mean, everybody knows what BDS is pretty much. Uh, and so although I still find myself explaining it, um, everybody do, do, at least understands that there's an effort to boycott um, Israel and, and companies doing business with Israel. And so that means it's successful. People know about it. People understand what's being tried. Um, but is it successful? If the act itself is not successful. Nobody's really boycotting. Maybe, you know, we've got to take a look at, at companies like Morningstar and urge them to, to make sure they're not uh, employing anti-Semitism uh, in, in the way they analyze companies. However, very rarely do we see any uh, success with the boycotts. There isn't. It, it is success with the act of teaching the BDS uh, campaign. It is the act of gathering 400 students and ragging on Israel. That is where it's very problematic. And we have to worry about this, this misinformation being pushed out to, to young minds. That's what we have to worry about. Not that it's actually working to boycott, because that's really not working. But the campaign itself is important to look at. Absolutely. Uh, Stephen Gerzoff and Jerry Stern asked similar questions. Isn't there a small but growing effort on the part of pro-Israel campus ac activists to mimic the tactics of the Apartheid Week organizers, and how successful are they? Uh, not to mimic what they're doing. No, I wouldn't say there's a, a, an effort to mimic uh, what they're doing. But, you know, Jewish uh, students and Jewish groups are trying to think out of the box and come up with ways to educate their campuses. It, it may not be confined to two or three weeks, and it shouldn't be. It should be an ongoing goal that they educate their friends, their peers, bring Israel and bring Judaism, bring culture to their campuses. That's really part of the answer. Documenting issues that might sound like they're anti-Semitic is part of the answer. Uh, we need to be engaged. We have to encourage our students to be engaged uh, and, and not to mimic uh, at all the bad things that we see, but to make it very positive. Give you a quick example, UCLA. Uh, students at UCLA are, are, are having Peace Week. They raise money for ch Save a Child's Heart. They try to have dialogue. It falls on deaf ears, but you know there there isn't uh, there isn't this space 
for having dialogue, but the will, the desire to have that dialogue is still going to be important. Well, that's wonderful to hear. Uh, Jack Wasserman asks, uh, well, he states, there's little point preaching here. What is Stand With Us doing to counter anti-Israel propaganda? So once again, we, we have massively scaled. Uh, we are now on six continents. We are, our social media is, is very successful, reaching millions of people every single week on the different platforms that we have. Uh, we have materials available online at no cost. Everything is given out to everybody at no cost in different languages. Uh, so we're, we're doing all we can to counter misinformation. Uh, we have legal uh, people available to students and even to community members, to faculty, if they feel they're being bullied. Um, so we're working very hard to set the record straight and every single day of the week, ex except maybe one Shabbat. Uh, but, you know, we, we are working very hard around the world uh, to, to counter misinformation and to provide people with the meat and potatoes that they can share with their peers. That's great to hear. Uh, before we go, can you please tell our viewers where we can find some more of your work? So go to standwithus.com and uh, look at the top. You could see standwithus.com booklets, resources at the very top, sign up for newsletters uh, in, on the right side of the top. Uh, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram. Uh, follow me if you are on Twitter. I'd love you to follow me, Roz Rothstein. Uh, you know, stay engaged with us. And if you have a problem, reach out, look at our legal work and see, and you can report incidents there and we will help you. We have never turned down a student who's asking for help. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. We really appreciate you taking time to speak with us today, Ms. Rothstein. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. Uh, so we've come to close of our webinar for our viewers. Please join us. Please be on the lookout for our weekly webinar offerings email coming out over the weekend. Thank you all for joining us and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you again. Bye. Thank you.